commodities, metals, energy, livestock, and agriculture offer what's called an uncorrelation to the stock market, meaning the movement of one does not follow the movement of the other. Further, commodities sometimes move in the opposite direction, i.e. a negative correlation, of stocks, providing a diversification benefit in one's investment portfolio, particularly during periods of market turmoil and unexpected inflation. This property makes commodities more attractive to retirees and those with a low risk tolerance aiming to reduce portfolio volatility and risk. This is the whole idea behind holding commodities in the famous all-weather portfolio. The most popular single commodity most people know of is gold. Here we're interested in diversifying broadly within commodities, which ETFs allow us to do. Historically, investing in commodities required experience, time, and effort in using futures contracts. Nowadays, we can simply buy shares of an ETF or exchange-traded fund just like shares of a stock. This also allows us to avoid betting on any single commodity. First on our list of commodity ETFs is PDBC, the Invesco Optimum Yield Diversified Commodity Strategy No K1 ETF. PDBC is the most popular ETF to invest in commodities. As the name suggests, Suggests, this fund has the convenient bonus of not producing the dreaded K1 form at tax time, unlike most commodities funds. PDBC has over $6 billion in assets and an expense ratio of 0.59%. This fund gets you exposure to 14 commodity markets, including oil, gasoline, corn, gold, sugar, natural gas, soybeans, and zinc, by seeking to mimic the index of its older brother, DBC, the DBIQ Optimum Yield Diversified Commodity Index. Second on our list is COMT, the iShares GSCI Commodity Dynamic Role Strategy ETF. COMT is a comparable ETF to PDBC, but is cheaper and less popular. COMT has about half the assets and seeks to track the S&P GSCI Dynamic Role Index, again providing exposure to 14 commodities. Also like PDBC, COMT does not issue a K1 because it uses a wholly owned Cayman subsidiary to buy commodity derivatives. COMT has an expense rate ratio of 0.48%. Last on our list is BCI, the Aberdeen Standard Bloomberg All Commodity Strategy K1 Free ETF. BCI is an actively managed commodities fund from Aberdeen with about $700 million in assets. It's not really truly active though. The fund still has an underlying index, but then tries to boost returns with its collateral. The index is the Bloomberg Commodity Index, which includes up to 27 commodity futures contracts. Like COMT, BCI uses a K and subsidiary to buy its derivatives and thus avoids issuing a K1. BCI is newer than the previous ETFs, having launched in early 2017, but is much cheaper with an expense ratio of 0.25%. But should you invest in commodities? Probably not. So now I'm going to contradict most of what I said in the introduction earlier. Again, commodities are physical assets like gold, oil, copper, livestock, coffee, agriculture, etc. Their value depends on their usage in production and is directly related to supply and demand. Any position in commodities is therefore a speculative bet on the short-term future rather than long-term growth associated with things like stocks, bonds, real estate, etc. As such, investors have historically turned to commodities as a hedge against uncertainty, but they don't even do a great job of that. Unfortunately, commodities themselves are unpredictable by their very nature. Crops go bad, the weather changes, macroeconomic policies shift, alternatives to things like copper are found, ownership, storage, and transportation of commodities increase costs. Stock ownership is a claim on a company's future earnings. A bond is a contractual obligation between a lender and a borrower, with interest payments going from the latter to the former. Ownership of a commodity is not value producing. It involves no earnings or cash flow and is simply a bet on production and or consumption at that time. A ton of copper will still be a ton of copper 10 years from now, and it pays no dividends or interest. Commodities are obviously useful to your everyday life, but not so much as an investment in securities markets. Cash flow drives returns. Think of owning a commodities fund as just paying for their storage somewhere. With technological advances, 
we would expect commodity prices to fall or stay flat over the long term. If a particular commodity remains expensive, cheaper alternatives will be found. If wheat prices rise, farmers will just plant more wheat next season, so supply rises and the price falls back to where it was. This supply and demand cycle can sometimes take years to complete, but over the long term we would again expect commodity prices to remain flat. After fees, commodities funds are typically pretty pricey, commodities are likely losing to inflation, and indeed they have historically. Commodities have had negative real returns over the last 100 years. Here's another pretty staggering stat. At the time of this video, commodities are simultaneously up 31% year to date, yet still have a negative 10 year return. Essentially, even in inflationary environments, investors have historically been better off over the long term holding just about anything other than commodities. And we now have assets like REITs, TIPS, etc. as alternatives. Even a narrow gold fund should be a better choice than broad commodities. Commodities may offer a tiny diversification benefit to lower volatility and risk, but we still want our diversifiers to have positive future expected returns. Moreover, commodities tend to become much more correlated with stocks at precisely the time we want to rely on them, during stock crashes. Andrew Tobias, in the only investment guide you'll ever need, maintains that it is a fact that 90% of all people who play the commodities game get burned. I submit that you have now read all you ever need to read about commodities. The legendary Ken French maintains a similar position. The claim that, going forward, commodity funds will have the same sharp ratio as the stock market will be negatively correlated with the returns on stocks and bonds and will be a good hedge against inflation can't all be true. Who would want the other side of this trade? The high volatility of commodity prices makes it impossible to accurately estimate the expected returns, volatilities, and covariances of commodity funds. But theory suggests that if commodity returns are negatively correlated with the rest of the market, the expected risk premium on commodities is small, perhaps negative. Finally, commodity funds are poor inflation hedges. Most of the variation in commodity prices is unrelated to inflation. In fact, commodity indices are typically 10 to 15 times more volatile than inflation. As a result, investors who use commodity funds to hedge inflation almost certainly increase the risk of their portfolios. If you do want to buy one of the commodities ETFs earlier, note that because commodities are so volatile, you only need a dash of them in the portfolio to exert their intended effect. Commodities should not comprise more than about 10 to 15 percent of the portfolio in my opinion. What do you think of commodities? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Some of the links below are referral links at no additional cost to you. If you choose to make a purchase or sign up for a service, after clicking through those links, I may receive a small commission. This allows me to continue producing high quality content on this channel and pays for the occasional cup of coffee. I have firsthand experience with every product or service I recommend, and I recommend them because I genuinely believe they are useful.